Good afternoon to you all. I am R. Vaidyanathan, also called as R. V. Let me first of all apologize for not being able to make it in person. Due to business exigency, I had to do this virtually. I have about 34 years of experience overall, spending the first 10 years with a system integrator and later into multiple roles of risk and resilience for the last two decades. I work for big corporates like HCL, TCS, and Cognizant, and also been an external auditor with British Standard Institution for about three years, and tried my hands on consulting into different industries and sectors with a consulting organization for about three years. I've also been the former president of BCI India chapter between 2016 to 2019, and with all these experience, I'm here between now and your lunch, talking about the buzzword called the digital risk, which is the need of the hour, I feel. And how would you address that? And what are those? And at a very high level, within the 30 minutes of time, I need to cover that. I'm sure I'll be able to provide some kind of a eye opener through the session. I am sure most of us here have experienced the pre-internet era, the internet era, and now the digital era, especially during the pandemic times and the post-pandemic utopia as being called extensively. The organizations are forced with challenges specifically in terms of digital transformation and the kind of technologies like a blockchain or hybrid IT, uh, IoT and uh, data analytics, all these have been posing a lot of risk and to what extent this trust need to be established as something that is running in the minds of the CXOs and has become a point of discussion in the board. So what are those different digital risks that we can expect? And how do we manage those digital risks is something that will be useful so that it can be addressed and controls can be put in place to ensure a secure way of trusting this digital transformation. Let us spend a minute or so to understand what is digital risk. As I mentioned earlier, more and more organizations are stepping into the digital platform to deliver in line with the expectations of the customer. And time is also the factor to be in the business. So in the dynamic and connected world, organizations are becoming increasingly dependent on the technology and in the process they have a lot of threats and risks that is involved let me explain through a short example in the recent time when i fell ill if i had we had normal circumstances i would have booked an appointment met a doctor in his clinic where he would have prescribed the medicine, then go to the pharmacy to collect the medicine and then come back home, consume the medicine to get okay. So now this entire thing happened digitally for me, sitting in front of my laptop, booking an appointment with the doctor. A doctor comes on the video and asks, to explain what are those challenges that I had, I mean, like the way that I'm going to sit in front of him. And he prescribes the medicine that is interconnected and it goes to the pharmacy and the information that comes in, automatically the trigger comes in, says you book this medicine to be delivered back home. And this is the kind of a digital platform I'm talking about. This is a telemedical consenting that has happened. And what are the risks that is involved in between? my personal information, the health information that it would carry, whatever be the 
kind of a illness that I would have carried. All these are going as a data within multiple systems and you're not too sure how secure it is and where are the data that is residing in this entire process. So the risk that you see in terms of digitizing anything and with the new and the disruptive technologies that organizations are deploying, there are many risks in terms of somebody who could probably hack your information or take the entire control of your system or the data privacy that need to be probably looked at may get compromised. All these are something that we need to understand as a risk because of the digital transformation that we are getting into, especially in the post pandemic utopia. So what are the different types of risk? Let's understand that. I have put the digital risk into seven broad categories as you see on the screen. Most of us would have experienced the need for cyber security, especially over the last couple of years when you have been working from home or working from anywhere. How secure is your network? And how are you getting connected to your network back into your organization? And all these have been leading to a secure connectivity wherein you should not have a risk of your data getting compromised or somebody hacking into your system and taking the entire control and asking for a ransom. So that's the cyber security risk that I see as one of the biggest risks. And the workforce risk in terms of the skills that the people carry. Today, I need to understand what is digital and what is digitization. And I need to understand how it works. And I need to assert what are those different assets that is being used in terms of digitizing the entire process and if I'm not clear about it in terms of understanding the digital way of doing business, it means that is the biggest challenge that we have. It's a biggest risk, workforce risk. <clears throat> By moving into a technology platform, what are the different statutory complaints that I need to meet or a regulatory complaints in the country of operation and all those like a GDPR, the Data Privacy Act, all those that we see need to be ensured and data resides anywhere and everywhere in this connected world and the complaints need to be adhered to. Third party, one of the important things in terms of the transformation that we see that the suppliers are allowed to log in into your network or you get onto the suppliers network and process the data whatever is required towards executing a transaction. So there again a third party risk in terms of meeting the compliance and all those becomes very important. Similarly while automating and digitizing your processes. There could be a lot of things that you need to look at from uh, application security and how well it is covered so that the automation platform is secure. With all these digital way of doing things, if anything that fails, how fast you can bounce back is the resilience risk that we carry, which is very important. And finally, everything is big data. In terms of technology that we see a uh, blockchain, hybrid IT or analytics, whatever that we do in terms of uh, AI or machine learning, everything is with the data. So the data need to have a very clear custodian, the controller, the processor, the record of processing, all those need to be looked at. And across these seven risks, 
if the organization has a kind of a mechanism to ensure and address this digital risk, I feel the organization can sit and relax that they have a better control in place and how do they have to put in a place a better control or manage this digital risk. Let's now understand at a very high level as to what the organizations need to do to manage this digital risk. As I mentioned from among the seven different categories of risk, the workforce risk in terms of the skills and skill up is something that need to be done to overcome the risk of people not knowing about the digital way of doing things. The NASCOM survey, the recent one that says 2 million people are required with digital skills to deliver and manage the digital platform. They need to know what is a digital platform, how the digital delivery works and how the world is connected and where does the data reside and is my network secure? What are the assets that is used in the process of delivering the product and services to the customers? Again, the 40% of the existing workforce lack the digital skills, especially in the digital transformation that deploys AI, blockchain or IoT. And becomes a catch-22 situation if the skill is not there to understand what can go wrong and what are the things that can be done proactively. Need to understand the very context of the digital platform to move on to have controls proactively in place to safeguard it. So the only way is to train people. <clears throat> you might have seen most of the organization or investing on training their people the digital way. The biggest challenge again that you see here is in a fast world, we see that people do not have time to sit in the classroom, especially the Gen Z who are expected to be more competent in the digital way of doing things, need to be trained and uh, there are many ways today in terms of, again, digitization of training and uh, sitting at my home, I can do few certifications on digital understanding, what is it and the digital risk, what is involved, how do I proactively safeguard that is something. I can spend about a week's time. I can have a different background altogether. I can. Uh, probably enable myself in a week or a 10 days or a couple of months into a new dimension. That's a way that we see the entire education system might also change down the line. Need not have to probably do your basic level of graduation and get into it. Select a particular domain and the area that comes in and train the people and you deliver that and tomorrow move to a different domain. Learn that, deliver it and move on. And that's a way that we see for which the scale up program is very much important and uh, the way that we need to look at and leverage upon is anytime, anywhere on an online course that the people who are involved in the digital transformation need to be uh, deployed and so that they ensure the digital risk are understood and addressed as the way the organization expects from them. The next important action is to establish a digital trust policy to address the digital risk. Why I'm bringing in this specific term called digital trust? As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the key challenges that the CXO level has got today. While I'm getting into a digital transformation. What is the digital trust 
I need to have for the organization from among lot of digital risks that the organization carry. So this has to be very clearly identified within the policy of what are those digital risks that the organization is exposed to, especially from the digital transformation drive that they have in terms of moving into either uh, intelligent automation or deploying a uh, robotic process automation, getting on uh, blockchain or cloud-based computing, IoT and the mobile devices. Depending upon the kind of digital transformation, the digital risk may vary and that need to be identified and customized to the organization and uh, the organization also need to know the kind of platform, the assets that is involved and the third party that is involved in terms of providing this digital transformation and finally the risk that need to be addressed and the control that need to be put in place, the people, the program, the improvements, the monitoring, all those need to be part of this policy across those seven different categories that I mentioned. Is that enough to have my people trained on the digital skills and to establish a digital trust policy to address the digital risk? Not really. This need to be institutionalized further and specifically added to that there has to be a very robust data governance policy and governance in place. The world today, the systems are connected and it's important that we need to know where the data resides, especially from the privacy point and to safeguard the data that we are processing. And it's not just enough that the infrastructure controls or the perimeter controls are deployed because we see the IT and the OT, the operation technology or the information technology is being integrated and for which there has to be a control in place and to know the digitized data where it resides need to be monitored and a record of processing and uh, the controller, the processor information need to be maintained so that the final information of the data security is always ensured. So this is the next step that organization need to have in place to ensure the privacy related risk or even a resilience risk that we talk about in terms of anything that fails. What is the manual way of operation? Where is the data that I need to uh, be running with it and who are the right people to hold that data. All those comes into picture and that need to be addressed through the data governance policy and governance on a periodical basis. Once the digital trust policy and the data governance policy and governance is established, it is time for the organization to revisit on their scope and objective of the risk assessment because the risk assessment dimension will change completely and this again relates to the digital skills of the people who are conducting this risk assessment need to be looked into and the entire life cycle of a risk assessment and mitigating risks to be done on a recurring basis. It may not be a one time that is being done once in six months or once in a year as the way that we were doing it before the digital transformation. This is a real time information that has to go in. If there is a way to automate the risk assessment and alerts and information can be provided to the risk owners and the mitigation that happens gets updated into the system and a dashboard that is uh, made available to the respective risk owners and the management would be a viable way to address the risk 
assessment and the management part of it. Typically from a cycle of identifying to protecting and response and recovery wherever possible, this can be automated. And the audit program, the level of difference, how you could probably bring in, this can also be part of the overall digital trust policy. <clears throat> and uh, it cannot be just again a um, yearly or an annual exercise that the audit is being done. This will be point in time assessments in terms of everything that's digitized and that's where the skill of auditing and understanding the digital transformation is very important and the people should be uh, knowing different standards that involve the cyber security or the privacy or the residence related uh, standards. All those are very important out here and not just a point in time assessments would help. A continuous assessment is something that need to be planned. So when everything is moving into digital, it means there is a real time risk assessment and a real time uh, audit need to be performed to ensure that these digital risks are taken care and addressed then and then. Similarly, the compliance or reporting through various metrics cannot be a point in time compliance. As we see, when things are moving digitally, the regulations and the compliance requirement also keep changing. So when it is dynamic, the compliance and reporting need to also be agile and uh, need to have a real time information of compliance and which will be very useful for the management to decide where they stand and what are the different controls that need to be put in place and what are the budgets that is involved in terms of implementing those controls. And this has to come with a 360 degree view, especially looking at what is the future of work it going to be and the workplace, whether it's going to be back in office, working from anywhere or working from home and what are the kind of skill required for the workforce and are we compliant and whatever that we have said in the policy and in, the, in terms of institutionalization of procedures and whatever that need to be looked into and uh, the future of regulation, future of compliance need to be focused on a dedicated team would be required to manage this specifically. And this has to be an ongoing basis of uh, measuring and managing the digital risk uh, quite periodically. And uh, the agility is something that we have seen uh, during the pandemic is a buzzword that is being talked about. And unless at least the compliance and reporting is effectively done on a real time basis, the digital risks are there always and uh, materialization of that may impact the organization if the monitoring and the compliance and reporting is not followed on a real time basis. Just to summarize, what are the key areas that organization need to focus on to overcome the digital risks? The first and foremost is to enhance the digital skill up program to ensure the people who are involved in the digital transformation are competent enough even to make a digital trust policy or a digital risk policy and have a robust governance in place. And focusing on the data governance, it has to be institutionalized and to have a robust data governance so that the data privacy part is taken care. Having established the policy and governance, the risk assessment and the audit and 
line with the digital risk policy need to be addressed so that that's effective and the compliance also need to be digitized so that it's agile and effective on a real time basis thanks for the opportunity and i would be happy to take the questions within the available time